some schedules today. Chad Cummings, VP and General Manager of KWOA Radio Works, Twins affiliate and uh, broadcasting station since 1947. We are happy to uh, have the Twins Caravan back in Worthington again this year as we have for the last number of years. And excellent to see the big crowd of people here. Uh, I, I understand a bunch of you have signs. How about everybody hold their signs up? We got the crew from the Meadows and stuff. Welcome. Uh, it is good to see you all here. We got a bunch of young Twins fans here. And uh, to get the show started, we bring in, uh, well, we brought in TC. And TC was rousing the crowd already. We have got uh, a 10-year Major League veteran. Uh, he is uh, the voice of the Twins now. Uh, you, you hear him on the broadcast. Uh, two World Series championships under his belt. And nobody rocks a mullet better than the one, the only, Dan Gladden. Thank you very much. How are we doing? Wow, what a turnout here today. I see that uh, you've got the Dozier bobblehead doll, huh? Yeah, he said that nobody, I used to be able to rock a mullet, but that was back in style. But here's a guy with a pretty good pelt, and it shows on that bobblehead doll. Hey, thanks for coming out here and participating in uh, the Twins Caravan. I've uh, been doing it, uh, I think my first year was 1987-88. Uh, Twins won the World Series, went out, record crowds. But, uh, you know, my very first time uh, having come from California to be able to experience it and the fan support that we saw. Uh, got to go out with Kirby Puckett, uh, the late Herb Carneal, so uh, it was quite special then. And it seems like uh, I still continue to enjoy coming out and meeting the fans and also traveling with some of the players. So at that time, uh, let's go ahead and get the program started. I am going to ask that uh, the fans, uh, you guys participate a little bit. All right? So need you to kind of... Ask some questions. Does anybody speak Spanish here? Como? Albert does. You speak Spanish? Yeah. Do you? So will you help out with us in uh, interpreting, please? <laughs> I, I will you? Okay. Uh, we pay good. We'll pay. All right. Why don't you just uh, hang on and then uh, we might have you come up here. But uh, at this point here, let me introduce the, this gentleman here. Uh, put up some impressive numbers last year. Uh, he really uh, started the season as more of a utility player, but um, played himself into an everyday role. And I think that you're going to see this combination here uh, at shortstop and uh, second base. But we've got uh, the twin shortstop, Eduardo Escobar. charge of music. That's pretty good. Is there somebody with a button over here? Is that you? Alright. Very good. Uh, this next here guy here uh, is just a great guy to be around. Uh, we talked about his bobblehead doll and uh, you know, last year kind of special for this kid here, and that uh, uh, got to go to the All Star Game. Uh, dramatic home run in that All Star Game, also. So, uh, just a great experience for him last year to kind of establish himself not only as the everyday second baseman, but also I think with Tory Hunter retiring, I think that you're going to see this kid here be kind of the face of the Twins. A little bit leadership role might be asked of him uh, with the, in the Twins dugout. So, I'd like to proudly introduce Brian Dozier. And I assume we just have one microphone. Just 
one microphone. Okay, what I'm going to probably do then is I'll just hand it to these guys and they can pass it back and forth. And uh, you guys can hear me okay, right? Yeah. You guys can hear me okay, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. So let me just uh, start off with okay. Doge and Doge. Talk a little bit about the exciting season last year uh, with the Minnesota Twins. It come up a little bit short, three games left in the season. Uh, coming home and have a chance for the playoffs and just came up a little bit short to kind of summarize the season for the Twins last year. Well, thanks for having us, number one. And uh, no, last year, as you saw, it was kind of a uh, unique year, uh, a better year. That's what I keep telling people on the caravan, but wasn't a great year. You know, we, uh, we we set out goals and uh, to achieve certain things as, as a team, and we didn't do that last year. Obviously, uh, our ultimate goal is get back in the playoffs, have a chance uh, to win a World Series championship, and and uh, get one of those shiny rings that Danny's been flaunting on the bus that he was going for '91, and uh, to get back to that, and that's our ultimate goal. But last year was a uh, was a year of uh, a lot of change, and we're on the cusp of something great. Not this this coming year, but uh, years to come, I think. Uh, and uh, with the you, you look at our team, a mix of. Uh, guys that's been around for a while, but also the, the core group of young guys that we have. You mix those two together, I think it's uh, going to be pretty exciting. What about uh, the loss of Torrey Hunter? What, uh, can you replace not only maybe some talent, uh, the numbers, but also what he meant in the clubhouse? Well, the biggest thing is we're just trying to find out who's going to lead the dance parties after, <laughs> after the game. So maybe you, right? Uh, but now Tory was, uh, you know, he was a big help uh, to me, not only um, on the field kind of stuff, but kind of, kind of evolving, embracing the leadership role for years to come. And he's taught me a lot. But uh, you know, he's going to be down, he's going to be up at Twins Fest this weekend. If any of you are coming up for that, and uh, he's going to be down in Fort Myers, Florida, for a couple of weeks, uh, mainly working with Miguel Sano, uh, moving him to the outfield. So kind of. Uh, working with him on the corner outfield position, some ins and outs and all that kind of stuff. But uh, he taught us all a lot. Obviously, he's one of the, uh, the twins great. And uh, I know you guys love Tori. We all do, and we're going to miss him. But uh, sometimes you just have to move on and stuff. But he left a lot behind uh, to influence a lot of us on the team. So, Okay. Would you come up for us, please? What's Pablo Espanol. Pablo Espanol? What's your, what's your name? Ali. What is it? Juan Carlos. Okay. Ali. Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos. Eduardo Escobar. Juan Carlos. Can you give him the microphone? We'd like to ask just, if you could ask, uh, Is there a problem between Puerto Ricans and Venezuelans? Um, not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Eduardo uh, how uh, he enjoyed his first time on the Twins Winter Caravan and in the snow. <laughs> Uh, well, he said that it's been a good experience for him and being part of the caravan. And the other problem is the cold weather. But I mean, that he's just that they're just trying to bring joy and happiness to the people, and he's actually enjoying the the event. And he's a lot different from Venezuela, obviously. But I mean. But the, he really enjoys the, the environment and the joy that he's bringing, they, this is bringing to the people. What's he looking for in this upcoming season, 2016, for the Twins? See, he understands it. <laughs> <laughs> he won't talk it. <laughs> um, he said that uh, well, last year the it was 
kind of a struggle, but now that they're just trying to bring work as a team and work hard, mainly to have a ring like yours, the one that you have on your hand. <laughs> Kind of like that. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> um, but it's mainly just trying to work as a team and have a good team communication, bonding, and bring trying to help the team win and win. Hopefully, make it to the World Series again. Did he notice a big difference between uh, Ron Gardenhire's managing style and Paul Molitor's managing style? Uh, <coughs> que lo, lo único bueno que me ha gustado es que los dos son buenas personas. Este, el monitor es una, es una persona, por su manager eh, que sabe mucho, que es una persona muy seria, correcta, su trabajo. Mm -hmm. eh, y el doctor Ron, eh, Ron, lo que pasa es que era más, como más divertido yo con, con, con GNG porque tenía más confianza. Yo le podía yo, yo jugar con él y decía, camán, camán, camán. Pero con Paul Monitor no lo puedo hacer porque es una persona como más seria. Me dan nervio porque está dando la mano. A cualquiera. Sí. Um, he said that he feels that both of them are great persons. It's just that the manager is more like a serious person, like more strict and more what he needs to do. And the other is more like he can joke around. He said that he used he said that he used to joke around like let's go, come on, come on, but. The other, he's a little. He gets a little bit more nervous with the other, with the other one because Hall of Famer, so and more serious with his work. So, but he said that both are great persons and they have great personality. I think if uh, you ask anybody, the transition from Ron Gardner to Paul Molitor, a little bit different in that you know Gardy was very animated, showed his emotions on his sleeve, whereas Paul Molitor's more under control, doesn't have to say as much, but at the same time can get that message across to the players. So I think the transition, Guardy had some great years. Uh, and, and you Twins fans have been fortunate to be able to have uh, a Tom Kelly as a manager, a Ron Gardenhire, and now a Paul Molitor. So uh, front office, they've done their homework in getting the right guys uh, to be the manager of that club. Questions? I said I was going to ask you. Go ahead, you guys had sent your buddy up here, man. With, uh, what's your question? Yeah, you. Your question? Yes. Um, who's your least favorite team to play? Least favorite team to play? I, uh, I don't hate many things in life. I feel like I'm the kind of guy that just loves everything, but I hate the Kansas City Royals. <laughs> I got a lot of good friends on that team, Ustakas and Hosmer and those guys. And, um, but when it comes playing time on the field, I'm ready to take them out, slide them into second. You know, I play dirty, but play pretty hard against them. And, uh, but, that's, uh, but that's a team that I, I can't stand playing, but I love playing. So. Go ahead. What's your question? Um, this is a question for um, Oh, hang on. Are you nervous? <coughs> <laughs> if they did what? If they a bunch of more. Bunch of more. <laughs> Two games. She said you guys could win more games uh, if you would bunt a little bit more. <laughs> well, first of all, sometimes <laughs> the <laughs> <they're asking laughs> you to sign. <laughs> okay, but other times. On their own. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the bunny comes from the dugout, and a lot of it doesn't. Uh, base hit bunny is kind of on your own, but sacrifice comes from the dugout. And uh, I, I agree, a lot of people need to implement uh, bunning a lot more. I feel like the game's kind of involved in, in uh, hitting more home runs kind of thing, but kind of get away from the bunning. Go ahead, buddy. Um, 
were you nervous when when you were hearing those walk off home runs? You know. <laughs> Was that nervous? Were you nervous when um, you were up to bat? You know what? Um, that's a good question, by the way. Uh, if, if you're not nervous, then something's wrong with you. I would say there's more nervous and anxious kind of thing because a lot of times in my, in my first five years, you have an opportunity to win a game at the end, and that's what you dream of. When I was when I was your age, I I dreamed about all that kind of stuff and the World Series, Game Seven. Like, you know, if you if you're not nervous, then something's wrong with you. That's a good thing. And uh, in that stretch, you know, hitting a couple of walk off home runs and stuff, it was. Uh, it was pretty exciting. When, when you know you have a chance to win a ball game for your team and it's all kind of in your hands, you kind of embrace that as an athlete, and it's, uh, that's what you kind of live for. So. Eduardo, are you uh, nervous ever? Facing yeah, the Yes. Every time. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Um, I was wondering, um, during the Game 7 of the 9 World Series, when you were on third base um, in the 10th inning, what your thought process was between third base and touching home plate to win the 91 World Series? The question was, was what were my thoughts? Yeah, well, and while you're thinking, one, you, when, when, you, when you saw that ball get smacked. Well, if, if you recall, it was a broken bat double. Knob block bunted me to third. They walked Puckett, walked her back to load him up. And then one of my trivia questions is, Gene Larkin drove me in, correct? Mm -hmm. Question is, who did Gene Larkin pinch hit for? Bush. Who? Bush. No. Think about it. We'll come back to it. No. My thoughts when I got to third base were, hey, Gardy, what do we do? <laughs> hey, Gardy was the third base coach. And when I looked at Gardy, he was more nervous than I have ever seen him. There was panic on his face. And he was like in the dugout trying to get something from the from TK as to yeah. tell me something. Well, they brought the infield in, the outfield was in, and it was just more or less, we're gonna go on contact. You know? Anything on the ground, you gotta go. Anything in the air, you're gonna tag up. Gene Larkin made it easy because he swung at the first pitch and hit it deep enough, and that was it. And then, of course, uh, you see Jack Morris coming in, waving his hand, and the group at home plate. So, uh, quite fun. Quite fun. Yes, sir. What do you think about the new first baseman from Korea? <coughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll get a chance to meet him on Friday at Twins Fest. Uh, I think we finally got his name right, Byung Ho Park, right? All right, we've just been calling him Park, this caravan. So, uh, But I'll have a chance to meet him. Um, you know, one thing it's, you're seeing is, obviously, in the United States, we, you know, the best pitching and, and uh, the, the best players, I guess, so to speak. So coming over, he's going to have to adapt a little bit as far as, uh, you know, seeing – you know, a Verlander or, or Kershaw, so every single day, basically, rather than in Korea. Obviously, the, the velocity is not how it is over here. So he's got to adjust a little bit. But, you know, the past two years, he's hit 52 home runs over there. And you, uh, and you, don't, just, you don't just do that, just rolling out of bed. That's a, so he's got a lot of power. So that's a, that's a big bat in our lineup that we need. Uh, uh, so we're, we're looking forward to another 52 home runs, hopefully. So. <laughs> Anybody come up with that answer? Who did Gene Larkin pinch hit for? Chili Davis. Chili Davis. Who said that? That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it was Chili Davis's spot in the order, but Chili Davis got pinch ran for in the eighth inning. And to this day, Chili Davis is still upset because he feels <laughs> that whoever they pinch ran for him was just as fast, and that was Chili Davis's at bat. He should have been the hero. So who did they pinch run? Junior. Who? Junior Ortiz. Junior Ortiz. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm looking it up online. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very well. Yes, sir. Question. No, Al Newman was it? Al Newman was not. Jarvis Brown. Who said Jarvis Brown? So you? No, you're not participating. <laughs> <laughs> you just did. Uh, Jarvis Brown. Oh, I just got that. You just got that. <laughs> Slow Wi-Fi. Jarvis Brown. He was on the roster for one thing to pitch run. Did his job. 
And he did his job. Question, yes. Brian, what do you have to do in the second half of the season to match your first half production? I guess just hit more home runs, right? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know. You know, you're always learning in the game. Um, when you stop learning, you might as well just hang them up. And one thing I'm learning is how to sustain more energy and that stuff to, to, to put together. I guess, uh, uh, you know, whatever goals are, whatever anything else. Uh, the big thing for me, though, is... Um, whether you're, whether I hit zero home runs in the second half or or 20 more, whatever it is, I, I could I could care less. If we're winning baseball games, that's uh, that's all I'm really worried about. So you find ways when your body gets tired and stuff to to still um, you know you look at stats, whatever. You didn't hit enough home runs the second half. You didn't drive as many people in. You didn't score as many runs. But you find ways uh, to get people over that it goes unseen. You find ways to do that thing. Uh, in order to win more baseball games, so it's not all about the stats and you know a lot of fans and everybody see it's it's uh, it's that win loss column only thing that matters to me. So, and don't forget the pitchers make adjustments second half of the season too on on players, so it's kind of a, a tough go there the second half because everybody else is making adjustments based on what you did in the first half too. What's your question? Yeah, I was wondering, did Tory Hunter take his walker? I could use a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Tory Hunter take her walker. You need a new one. His walker he got for his Oh, That's yeah, right. for his 40th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of fun that they had in the clubhouse. It was, uh, and I think no matter what kind of work you do, I think if your work environment is fun and you get along with your coworkers, production, everything's going to be up. And I think that was the case last year uh, with the Twins. That was funny. It was. You know, it was everything was, was, was really good about the Twins. Uh, they were able to, and that's, this is one thing that I noticed with you guys last year. You know, whereas years past, uh, you would lose a tough ball game, and it would seem to linger with you guys. The next day you would come out and it would still be thinking about, whereas, hey, win or lose, you guys were able to turn the page last year and focus on the upcoming game. I think that was key uh, for any winning team. Yes? Were you excited going into the All-Star game when you hit those no. home runs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes, I was very excited. Um, <clears throat> the way everything kind of transpired, I guess, you know, that whole week with the, the voting process and thank you for whoever voted and all that kind of stuff. But, Thank you. Uh, but it was pretty cool, not, you know, not getting selected and then doing the final vote and not making it that way, and then somebody got hurt and all that kind of stuff. It was, it, it was pretty cool. Everything. The biggest thing for me was I was kind of skeptical when uh, the twins asked, you know, can we do the vote dozier campaign and stuff? Because I don't, I don't like drawing that attention and all that kind of stuff away from playing the game. But I said, why not? Let's do it. And uh, the fan interaction and everything uh, really evolved, and that was cool for me to see. And uh, uh, just blessed to be a part of everybody kind of coming together. It wasn't just me myself that made it, it was kind of everybody that I felt, and it was, it was pretty cool. Were you also nervous? I got a question for Eduardo. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Were you also nervous when you came out to bath in the top of the eighth inning? You know what? So uh, before, the, before the game, he kind of, the, the manager, Ned Yost, tells everybody, you know, you'll be going in in the fifth inning, you'll be going in in this. And uh, he came up to me and he said, well, we have Jose Altuve and Jason Kipnis. So I was kind of the third, second baseman. And he said, uh, we're going to try to get you in a bat at the very end. And uh, so Jose played five innings and Kipnis played two, two and a half and got in a bat. He was supposed to hit again in the eighth. And Jason is one of my, uh, one of my close friends. So he comes up to me and says, hey, you know, do you want to hit? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so... Uh, so Ned came over and said, you know, go ahead and go in. And, and to be honest with you, it's, it's probably the second or third time I've actually, like, came off the bench, I guess. And it's a whole different ball game. I'm sitting there and, the, you know, he says, all right, you're going to hit this inning. So I run in the back and start stretching and trying to break a sweat real quick or whatever. But uh, it all kind of, when, when he told me I was going to hit, it was all like within five or ten minutes. I had to hurry up and get ready, find my bat. I forgot to bring my bat out and stuff. I had to run up to the locker room. And, but, uh, but all that kind of stuff. And I was pretty nervous, to be honest with you. Uh, one being the, the the fact that you know it's the All Star Game and national attention, all that kind of stuff. But the guy that was on the mound, 
is one of the guys I hate facing. He's uh, the closer for the Pirates, my Lanson. And but uh, but he was he, he threw me a hanging breaking ball, so I like those. <laughs> and then you hit a home run. That's right. <laughs> All right, one more question. Yes. I was in the second grade, we had to fill out what, what do you want to be when you grow up. And you had number one and number two. And number one was I wanted to be the shortstop for the Atlanta Braves. Sorry, Dan. No, no, right. right. <laughs> they lost. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, I wanted to be a, a ride on the back of a garbage truck the rest of my life. That's that was it's a hope. So one didn't, because uh, I used to love riding on the back, so my friend was one. And anyway, that's another story. But, uh, but that being said, uh, set goals at an early age, and you have dreams of doing whatever you want to do in life. You want to be a professional baseball player. You want to be a teacher, a coach, doctor, whatever it is. I can promise you along the way, number one, there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of people that tell you that you cannot do it. And that's awesome because that just adds fuel to the fire to go out and prove people wrong. That's number one. Number two, I promise you, that you, you can achieve anything you want to in life, no matter what it is, if you put your mind to it and accept the fact that it's a lot of hard work. So, Eduardo, you could, uh, what would you tell the young kids? No, bueno, este, para mí, verdad que lo principal es todo es trabajar fuerte todos los días, no importa la capacidad que tú que tú tengas. Este, la principal es la humildad, ser humilde y tener confianza en lo que tú vayas a hacer. Lo más importante es que si tú tengas confianza, da lo que hagas, tú vas a lograr, tú vas a lograr todo tu mente y siempre tener la fe en Dios. Y cuando no tengas la fe en Dios, que, que siempre le va a dar caminos a uno y bendice a uno. He says that um, the main thing, one of the main things are hard work in whatever you're trying to do in your life. Um, always stay humble, that's another main thing, and just have faith and believe in God that if you, believe, if you have faith and believe in God, then that will always get you where you want to go, no matter what, how hard, how much hard work it takes, no matter how hard, difficult it is, you'll get there, as long as you put effort, work hard, and have faith. Let's hear it for these guys, all right? All right, everybody, one more time, big round of applause for your Minnesota Twins, Eduardo Escobar, Brian Dozier, and of course, Dazzle Dan Gladden, thank you very much for coming, and uh, they're going to get out, uh, they got to get on the road here quick and stuff, so we're going to ask that everybody uh, give them time to get out, and uh, they're going to get going, but thank you all for coming, Minnesota Twins Baseball. Uh, of course, Pitchers and Catchers uh, Twins Fest this weekend. They're going to start reporting pretty soon. And then before you know it, on AM 730 KWOA, you'll be able to listen to Twins Baseball. So thank you all for coming.